you got it all worked out. You suddenly wonder what it's all about. That's love. Oh, that's love. That's love. Just when you think you're on solid ground, just a word and you're upside down. Between you both, you'll be looking after all my needs. <laughs> well, Patsy, do you want to be the one to give this lovely old thing a new lease of life? I couldn't offer the same service for you, could I? <laughs> a round of golf leaves you breathless, dear. <laughs> well, Patsy? Oh. I'd have loved to, but I can't. What? Why is that, Patsy? Well, you know, darling, we agreed. Honestly, he'd forget his head if it wasn't screwed on. It's mostly domestic. We have a temporary nanny at the moment, but my next priority is to get a permanent one, and, well, then I'd have to be here with her for at least a month. We could make some arrangement. I could take more time off work. You already have to go to the West Indies with Laurel next week. Yes, I know, but we could always make Anyway, them. it isn't only the children. What then? Well, there's the arrangements for the wedding, for a start. What arrangement? Book a taxi for the registry office next Tuesday. <laughs> I would have loved to do the job. It's a wonderful offer, and I'm really sorry I can't. Thank you, Laurel. Excuse me. Well? I will not let you dump the wreckage of your career on our doorstep like a cat dumps a dead rat. Just so it can lie there, rotting for the rest of our lives. And every time it's needed as a weapon, we'd have, oh, if only I'd been able to take that job. We agreed half an hour before she turned up here this morning that she was poison. We'd keep her out. Safety first. You've convinced yourself that I'm planning to have a quick fling with the very merry widow in the not-too-distant future. Next week in the West Indies, right after our wedding. So you're going to self-destruct to prove some bloody point or other? Well, I won't have it. You won't have it. It's my career. You know, what is loony about all this is that I, I haven't done anything yet. Yet? I, I mean, <laughs> I haven't done anything, period. I saw the way you two looked at each other last night. I may look longingly at somebody else's bangers and mash. I don't necessarily eat them. <laughs> and how the bangers and mash look back at me, I'm not responsible for. No. So you admit you were looking longingly. You were longing to. Well, that's as good as doing it. Oh, no, it's not. Not half as good. <laughs> I long to throttle your mother, but I'll never do it. Anyway, why do you think she offered the job to me and not someone else? Well... It's obviously a device to keep her in contact with you. Do you think that poor, demented female would choose the wrong designer because she's so crazed with lust for my flesh? Hmm? <laughs> for the sake of a, of a quick bonk on the beach next week with me, she would willingly spend the rest of her life gazing at wallpaper she can't stand. <laughs> yeah, I never realised I had such power over women. You haven't. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't be so rude. I said it first. Why did she fix on you, though? It's extraordinary. She didn't fix on anyone. She's the definitive prick teaser. <laughs> as soon as we get to the Cayman Islands, she'll have all those lonely bankers running after her like hungry puppies. Poor little me will be discarded. Poor little you. <laughs> So you'll come back and you'll say, I am innocent. She did it not with a wimp, but a banker. <laughs> You're a real lawyer, aren't you? You've got your excuses already. My God, hang on. Did I hear a joke in there, a literary one? It was an accident. I wasn't thinking. Well, lie down quickly and don't think again. <laughs> Thank God for small mercies. My missus hasn't gone completely around the twist. I am not your missus. You soon will be. Oh, Donald. And here we are shouting at each other, an engaged couple. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is... 
We've just sort of lost each other. Even our sense of humour died. Oh, I don't know. Not with a wimp, but a banker's not bad for a corpse. <laughs> T.S. Eliot would have been proud of you. What with, um, that? Not with a... a wham, but a bonker. <laughs> not with a bimp, but with a wham... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, happy guts. I'll join the party. Hello, Gary. <sighs> Sit down, if you like. Not like you to be in a pub this time of the day. You're generally tearing home to Patsy's loving arms. Yeah. Me, I like a bracer on my own before I face my tribe. Don't blame you. <sighs> what about that Laurel Manasotti, eh? Mmm. <laughs> I mean, she's the business, isn't she? And a body on it. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'd like to lie on top of her and just splash about for hours like a kid in a paddling pool. <laughs> yeah, she's all right. All right. Oh, you give me a headache. You do, really. I tell you, when I took Mandy home after dinner at your place, just like the old days, might you out to pretend she was Laurel. <laughs> that must have been nice for her. I'll say it was. Didn't she realise? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to be Cecil Parkinson, then. <laughs> Cecil Parkinson? Yeah. Mandy's into politicians. I don't understand her sometimes. <laughs> anyway, after that, it was great. Laurel and Cecil at the time of their lives. <laughs> God knows why she wanted to bother with you. Who? Laurel. I don't know what you mean. You're going to make a mess of that, I can see it. <laughs> what? Giving her one in the West Indies. <laughs> Do you think oh, I'm... come on, don't tell me it hasn't crossed your mind. <laughs> Crossing my mind is one thing. Look, save your breath. I've seen her. I've watched you, and you are going to give her one. <laughs> or several, I should say, in the Cayman Islands or wherever, and then you're going to come home as though butter wouldn't melt and say, ooh, me? <laughs> Got that one right, didn't I? <laughs> Was. What? Was. Was. Was going to. <laughs> well, what's stopping you? Oh, it's Patsy coming no, too, no, bad no. luck. There are complications. Yeah, well, it would be with you. <laughs> Patsy suspected. Yeah, well, of course she suspected you, Burke. The way you looked, I should think she was bloody certain. <laughs> I did nothing. It's not what people do gives them away, it's what they don't do. I was just being natural. <laughs> natural? You looked about as natural as a polar bear in a desert. <laughs> and hotter, too, sometimes. <laughs> Trouble was, it was my first time. Oh, dear. Please be gentle with me, Laurel. <laughs> I've never even wanted to be unfaithful before. How long you and Patsy been together? Eight years. You're retarded. <laughs> I can't handle it. I just thought, a nice week with Laurel around the other side of the earth and then no harm done. It's all gone wrong. Yeah. Oh, Laurel's offered Patsy this amazing job. She and Patsy would have been seeing each other constantly. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that is a bit dodgy. Your own doorstep and all that. I'll say it's wrecked everything. Yeah. You say she and Patsy would have been seeing each other. Mm. Patsy's turned the job down. Oh, well, that's all right, then. No, it's not. Now I feel guilty. <laughs> you what? I've been trying to persuade Patsy to take this job. I said you was complicated. I didn't realise you were twisted out of shape. <laughs> this job is more important to Patsy, well, to both of us, than me having a quick bit on the side in the West Indies. Now, I've done nothing, she's turned down the job, and we're both miserable. <laughs> Honestly, some married men happily bonk their way around the world scot-free. I just think about it and I'm up to my neck in trouble. It's not fair. <laughs> You're not married, though. We'll be tomorrow. What? Shh. It's a secret. Patsy and I are quietly making it legal tomorrow in the registry office. This trip with Laurel came up after we'd fixed it. You are the only bloke I've ever known who is going to have his final fling after his wedding. <laughs> Was going to. Come on, get up. We're getting married today. 
Keep your eyes closed. It's bad luck to see the bride before the ceremony. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's all off. <laughs> Donald. Mm. Should we just leave things as they are? No, come on. That's laziness. Come on. Up. This is our last chance. What? To sin. It's <laughs> illegal tonight. I won't be here tonight. Oh, Pooh. Yes, I forgot. Say, take oh, me now. Morning. Hello. Ooh. Kisses. Look at this. Oh, sorry, that's wonderful. It's perfection, sweetheart. Did you do this? Yes. Ooh. Are you going to pick on your nanny this morning, Mummy? Nope. This afternoon. Mummy and I are very busy this morning. We have to go and see a very important man. A registrar. Why are you seeing him? We're going to see him about a knot. A knot what? <laughs> <laughs> a knot. A knot with a k. A knot. We're getting a knot tie. <laughs> We're tying ourselves in knots. <laughs> you are silly. Yes. Ludicrous. <laughs> I do solemnly declare... I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, Donald Mervyn. Why I, Donald Mervyn. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Patsy Joan Estelle. <laughs> to Patsy Joan Estelle. Now, Patsy, I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment that I know not of any lawful impediment why I, Patsy Joan Estelle why I, Patsy Joan Estelle may not be joined in matrimony may not be joined in matrimony to Donald Mervyn to Donald Mervyn <laughs> Now, Donald, I call upon these persons here present to witness I call upon these persons <laughs> here present to witness that I, Donald Mervyn, that I, Donald Mervyn, take thee, Patsy Joan Estelle, take thee, Patsy Joan Estelle, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife. Now, Patsy, I call upon these persons here present to witness, I call upon these persons here present to witness, that I, that Patsy, I Patsy jo Joan Estelle, take thee, Donald Mervyn, to be my lawful wedded husband. Show off. <laughs> Uh, the ring. <laughs> oh, um, do you have a ring? Oh, I, I didn't. No, 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 it's not essential. Oh, oh, no. here. Oh, will this do? Would you like to put that back on her? <laughs> yes, thank you. <coughs> Is this where I get to kiss the bride? Uh, well, it's not obligatory, but uh, yes. <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Do you now pronounce as man and wife or something? Uh, well, it hardly seems necessary, but uh, y yes. <laughs> you are, yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Please. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Please, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Many congratulations. All the best. Oh, you've got a camera? Uh, no, have you? No, I didn't think. Oh. Don't you want to keep the moment for posterity? Oh. We'll keep it in our heads. Oh. And your heart. Yes. There too. Oh. You should throw that. Should I? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Up in the air. <laughs> then I can catch you. <laughs> okay. Something to remind you. <laughs> I marry him. 
She takes him off to the West Indies. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> Funny world, love. <laughs> No one's coming, you know. Looks like it. Oh, it's too bad. Four I had to see, not one of them's turned up. Obviously, the nanny profession's booming. The whole business of getting staff these days is impossible. Oh, do shut up, Mother. You've never had staff in your life. <laughs> what time is it? Their plane won't even have landed yet. I know, Mummy. I meant here. That's right, dear. Keep your mind off the two of them. I meant, didn't you have to go at five? No, I'm all right for the moment. I've told you, I'll step into the breach if you can't find anyone. You'd have to live here, Mummy. You know as well as I do, one of us would commit murder within a week. <laughs> I wonder if they're staying at the same hotel. On second thoughts, it wouldn't take a week. <laughs> Someone's deigned to show up late. That's a good start, isn't it? Now, don't bite her head off. She may have a perfectly good reason. Don't worry, I'm groveling already. <laughs> yes? Mrs. Redfern? Yes. Hi. You were seeing a friend of mine called Judy Barnstable for the post of nanny in your household. She couldn't make it. So I'm applying instead. What? I didn't phone her right, because uh, people just say no automatically. I thought at least you could take a look at me, then throw me out. Oh. My name is Hank McAllister. I'm a trained nurse. I have my Canadian SRN certificate with me. I have hospital experience. I'm a qualified cook. I'm good at housework. I get on with kids. I'm not gay, and I need the job like men. <laughs> What's it matter whether you're gay or not? I don't know. It just seems to bother some people. <laughs> Mummy, this is Hank McAllister. Hank, this is my mother. Hi. Hello. Hank's applying for the job. What job? Nanny. <laughs> oh. He's a state registered nurse, a qualified cook, likes housework, needs the job, and he's straight. <laughs> straight? You mean he hasn't been in jail? <laughs> no, Mummy, I don't. He has been in jail and now, Mother. <laughs> Put the kettle on. Hank, sit down. Let's have a chat. Zoe, this is Hank. Hello. Hello, Zoe. Matthew, say hello to Hank. Hello. Hi, Matthew. Hank's Canadian. I'm English. Of course you are. I'm going to leave Hank here with you for a few minutes. Will you look after him? All right, Mummy. I won't be long. Sure. Do you want a hand? <laughs> Let's just wait and see. Well, they don't hate him. He may be a monster for all you know. His friend's is Mary Dixon's nanny. I may be lying. Yes, Mother. I'll phone her and check. Whatever we've done, I'd say. <laughs> You'll be surprised, I should think. <laughs> He'll throw a fit. He won't want someone else rooting around in his territory. Oh, Mother, he's a man, not a bloody hippopotamus. <laughs> anyway, I had to put up with another woman. Olive was beautiful and young. Competition was a bit much at times. Good for you. Kept you on her toes, I'm sure. Well, Hank can keep Donald on his toes. It'll make a change. <laughs> I could use Donald's being away to give Hank a week's trial. And if I didn't like him, when Donald comes back, Donald can sack him. <laughs> Husbands have their uses. You can't stay here alone with him till Donald gets back. Why am I not? You could all be raked and murdered in your beds. <laughs> well, his references look fine. Anyway, if I take on a woman, she might turn out to be the mad chopping nanny from Axminster or something. <laughs> I like him. What's more important is do the children. Oh. 
let them see you. All right, all right. And what's all this straight gay business? How did that come up? He brought it up just to get rid of it. Get rid of it? Puts it right in the middle of the table. <laughs> Which is he? He says he's straight. Really? Zoe's a little girl, you know. <laughs> Mother, I'm going to throttle you. Not all men are child molesters, straight or gay. Well, if he's funny, one of them's in danger. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's assume that you're lucky and he's not a pervert. <laughs> what happens at bath time and all that? He's a stranger. She's a girl. Well, I'll just have to see to her myself. When you're not here, working, what happens if she's mortified with embarrassment and she's too shy to say anything? Hmm. Okay, team, time to go in. Let's go. And next time, Matthew's on my side. Hank says we've got to come in. We'll catch Carl. He's absolutely right, and you come. He said he'd tell us a story. Could he bother us and put us to bed? Yes, please, Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Donald. Want some tea? You weren't expected for another hour. When that jet stream gets you, those jumbos really go, don't they? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Hank. I'm the new nanny. I was making this for Patsy. Do you want to take it up to her? Be a surprise. <laughs> It is you. Oh, hello. Welcome mm. home. Hello. Pardon me. <laughs> Tea's over there. <laughs> I never realised the West Indies could be so boring. It was all lawyers and bankers. I must say, you don't look very brown. Just my nose. I only stuck it out of doors for a couple of minutes in between meetings. <laughs> and Laurel? Didn't see much of her. Ha. Huh. She was probably out bonking bankers. <laughs> Don't they have laundries in the West Indies? I knew you were longing to do it, so I brought it all back for you. Shall I go and wake up the kids? I'm dying to see them. Don't go without me. I don't want to miss it. Just give me two minutes to put this lot in the machine. Sorry, Hank, to do this while you're eating. Just want to bum Donald's washing in the machine. Please don't mind me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't they have laundries in the West Indies? Mm. Apparently not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more comedy and that's love next Wednesday when Donald has to come clean about those knickers in his suitcase. Drama follows tonight on Colton Select when Trevor is reprimanded for consorting with lunatics and subversives. That's in the Beidebeck affair. That's love.